All right, hello everyone. So what I've been doing recently is mostly posting articles on my blog on energyenterprise.com. And you know, I've I decided to do that more just because I found that articles are a lot easier to write. It's easier to get coherent thoughts down. Uh, I know that in a lot of these videos, I just go totally off the deep end, uh, go everywhere. And I, I know that it's hard for other people to understand really what I'm trying to say because it's hard for me to understand what I'm trying to say sometimes as well. So, um, what I'm going to start doing here is just reading my blog posts themselves. I think that'll, this will give them some context. Um, you'll notice the way I say things, the way I string things together. So it's like a complimentary sort of, uh, you know, thing that I'm doing here with uh, the blog and the YouTube. Um, plus, it makes it listenable for people if they want. Um, it's actually a good idea. I didn't even think of this, but maybe I could just post audio files uh, themselves without video of the blog posts. Maybe that would be a fun thing to do as well. Um, but anyways, let's just get right to it. Um, let me get my face looking a little, a little better. I'm hoping. Uh, but you know, as always, it's tough to get a green screen uh, completely correct. But I also like that picture, so I want to get that in the in the shop. But whatever. Um, you know. What I just wrote about this morning, uh, I was watching a video on YouTube and, uh, you know, basically it's, it's talking about, oh, you know, I don't feel, I don't feel included. Uh, uh, quite literally it was, there's too many white people at national parks and there's, they showed a video clip of this black woman who didn't feel included. Um, and I want to talk about this thing of identity and uh, how it relates to spiritual ideas and um, yeah so let's just get straight to it so the title of the article is conditioning of identity and the spiritual consequences so I try not to talk politics too much on the site but hey spirituality is under attack by the politics of today today I'm focused on the buzzword identity or the concept of identity politics it's practically everywhere in the world, and for the majority of the population, their conscious and subconscious mind has been deeply influenced by this idea. This is the idea that skin color matters in terms of the way we should interact in the world. I understand the history and the current reality of racism, sexism, etc. It's certainly still here. I'm here to put forward a new concept into people's minds with the real goal of dismantling all these isms once and for all. In truth, my idea is very simple. I mean, this is what a lot of people have talked about in the past. Treat people as individuals. So in the spirit of the great Yanni in his 1997 performance at the Taj Mahal, which I just think is absolutely magical, I watch it all the time, um, there are as many ways to live life as there are people on this planet. After that, he added a quote from Socrates, the perfect human being is all of us put together. So we have individuality and a collective ideal here being presented by Yanni and I think this is a very powerful idea. Interference in the collective is the subtitle of the next paragraph or the next section. The first idea that we must accept is that it is theoretically possible to build a society truly based on individuality and togetherness at the same time. When we realize that we are all part of the same thing but also that we have been given a unique genetic vehicle then we may start to become synergistic and use this fact to our advantage. This is the basis of a society without racism or sexism or any other ism. We start to see the beauty in each individual which is beyond the skin, beyond all other traits, and accept them for whatever they are. The above paragraph could almost be taken out of the Gene Keys book and cited. This is what I've been reading a lot and contemplating a lot recently. It's heavily based upon the 44th Gene Key, which is part of my profile. Its shadow is interference. Its gift is teamwork, and its city, the highest expression, is synarchy. What I am speaking to is the blossoming of teamwork within the genetics of the human population past the shadow of interference. In order to properly understand how this gift will come about, we must understand the mechanics which are keeping most of us in the shadow of interference. Identity politics, the next subheading. The political climate of today is heavily based on identity politics. This is a phenomenon of the left and the right. However, I will concede that it is much more obvious component of the left. This is a primary cause of what keeps us in the shadow of interference. 
Quite literally, we are being taught interference everywhere, through the media, education, work, and many other things. Anytime we are being taught to think of someone as less or more, or, e or different in any way, based on any single trait, skin color, sex, sexual orientation, or see a policy being enacted which differentiates people and proposes economic and social changes to fit these differentiations, we are falling further into the shadow of interference. Regardless of what you see whites having done in the past or blacks having been subject to, we must understand that there is no end to this path of thinking. There is no definition you can plant on someone's head that will actually define them. Us humans are paradoxical fractal patterns woven into an ever-changing cosmos. The question of identity will always meet the paradox of individuality. I agree with the left on one fundamental point, and that is the point of unconscious programming. We differ in that they prefer to duplicate this same programming which they are trying to get rid of. By teaching that we must discriminate against whites for their past discrimination of minorities is to create an endless cycle of anger and hatred between groups. Misunderstanding and chaos have already ensued to a great degree because of this. I think we can all agree on that. So activate the DNA of teamwork. The entire basis of my growth is in the activation of DNA. It's a scientific fact that your DNA is highly sensitive to subtle electromagnetic signals which can be transmitted in a variety of ways, your attitude being one primary way. I link a study, but it's a very basic study. It's not, you know, it's just basically saying your, your DNA is a uh, uh, signal relay or what are they? Antenna. That's what they call it. Um, higher and more loving frequencies will literally transform your genetics into something much greater than you were before. We, we talk about junk DNA or the scientists talk about junk DNA. There's no junk DNA. It's inactivated DNA. You can activate these genetic sequences in yourself. And uh, there's some pretty crazy things that come about or can come about uh, when you think about that on a very deep level in terms of quantum realities and kind of shifting things on more than just a 3D level. But anyways, that's that's a sequitur. You see, these are bonuses. You get bonuses when I when I speak on YouTube. The attitudes that are being taught to us by the mainstream keep our DNA activated in the shadow frequency. Whites are taught to feel guilt. Minorities are taught that they are victims. These are negative definitions. I don't care what objective facts you have to back it up. There's reality behind them. You know, there's reality around the history of whites and blacks, but it's not the point. When you implant something like this in the unconscious mind, chances are that it will manifest in that manner. Such is the nature of the unconscious mind. It cannot reject, it must accept. So like I was saying, they're trying to, the left understands a little bit of the unconscious programming, but they're trying to program the same thing that they're trying to deprogram, racism, sexism, all these things. They say it's for justice. That's fine. I just have a different view of, of how to live in the world. I want to build something different. We will eventually get to the point where we understand that abolishing definitions based on any single trait is how we create the most peaceful and prosperous reality for all. This is beyond any economic or political system that we traditionally conceive of in order to rectify these supposed injustices. It's a simple fact of frequency and acceptance. Trying to control the way in which it happens is nearly always bound to result in a rebound of the shadow. It doesn't mean we don't need to work to build it, but thinking that we have the answers already, no, we have to allow those answers to come into our being and be expressed into the world in a natural way. We're totally per perverting the entire system right now by the way we're doing this. Because again, the very theory that they're basing it off of doesn't make any sense. Because of individuality, because you don't know anything about anybody. Individuals are always changing. They're always unique. Okay, so how are you going to propose a policy when you group people together like that? It doesn't work, and it never will work. Defining anything based on a single group, group outcome misses the point that we are all one group, and that in that group there is only one variable, individuals. Love, Ryan. Uh, I love you all very much. I hope you enjoy this, and uh, I'll see you the next time I post an article. I actually really enjoyed doing this, and... Uh, I will keep doing it more. All right. Peace. And a blue jay just landed out my window. That's very, very pretty. I wish you could see it right now. It's actually a very big blue jay. Saying hi to me, just creeping up the branch. <laughs> All right.
All right. See you later.